agent definition. What is it and why do we need it? To figure this out, let's take a moment and think what we need for a crowd. So I have this guy and I want to make a crowd out of him. The first thing I need is some points and then I want to instance him on those points. So I have that here, a very lame crowd. We have the points, we have instanced him on them and each instance is what we call an agent. So cool, okay, so this is the first step. Obviously we need to do a lot more. One of the things that would be nice is to have some variations. And sure, we have the randomized color and that gives us a bit of variation, but it would also be nice to have some variation with the geometry. So for example, maybe some of them should have a hat and some of them have a different shirt and so on. So one way to go about this would be to have three different types of geometry that we instanced on. That is a bit wasteful. So wouldn't it be nice if we just had one agent template and in this we had all the geometry and then we could just tell you what geometry should be visible. Let's do that. So in this crowd, I've added a sphere in a box in the agent template. And the agent template is what we call an agent definition. So I have the sphere in the box, then I randomly have them visible for different agents. And to control what geometry is visible, we have what we call layers. So layer is a simple set of instructions telling what geometry should be visible or not. So we are getting somewhere, but there is still a long way to go. So the next obvious step is that we want to have some animations to make it more interesting. So we can have that. So here we have them walking around. So we could of course approach these animations in different ways. So we obviously want to store the animation in the template and then for each instance we can tell you what frame of that animation we want to play. So one way to solve this would just be have an animated geometry cache. But it has its limits and if we go to the next part this this crowd and we have a ground that is adapting to, then you would see why. So if we take this crowd from just a brief look, it might look like all the animations are the same, but there are variations to them. So if we would go into the simulation, if we look at each agent, when I turn on and off this train adaptation, oh, actually I'm gonna find an agent where we can see it a little bit better. So this one here is a good example. When I have him adapt to this ground, he's actually changing slightly. So it's not just a geometry. So what we have here in this crowd is that we have a skeleton and we are deforming the geometry in real time. And this is very beneficial. And for this, if you were further away, you could probably get away without having a rig. But the closer you get to the agent, the more important this gets. And if we're gonna to go to a more extreme example, and obviously also type of things that people mostly want to do, like this. Here the agents are reacting to the collisions and they need to collide to the ground and and so on. So obviously for this it wouldn't work at all to just have a geometry cache because it's so precise how you have to react to the ground when it collides. But with a rig that is less of a problem, then you can just have the rig adapt and then you can skin the geometry after. And it's obviously less memory intensive to just have some matrices that you are calculating instead of having every point of every agent. So yeah, this is what it's all about. So now when you understand why we need to have an agent definition, let's create an agent definition. To create an agent definition, we're gonna use an agent sop. So I'm gonna create a geometry and in here I can drop down an agent. And this is a sop that will create the agent definition. So we have some different alternatives here. So the character rig, and that is if we have set something up within Houdini. A definition cache is if we have cached it out already. FBX, if you have an FBX, you can just plug it in here. And you can even use an USD if you want to. In this course, we're mainly gonna use the character rig. The question I get all the time is what are the requirements for your agent rig? And the easy answer is that you can plug in almost anything. I'm just gonna prove it to you. So if I go out, so first, let's create some geometry that we want the agent to be. And I'm just gonna make a tube, make it a polygon. And I'm gonna have some rows, I'm gonna do it a bit thinner. And let's put some caps to it. So there is our geometry defined and oh, maybe some bones so we can deform it. And let's go to rigging and I gotta select bones and let's just select them here in the viewport like that. So here you can see we have our geometry and we have our rig and then I just want to skin them. So I'm going to go to capture geometry and then you say select the root object of capturing hierarchy which would be this one 
and then I'm going to press enter and now we have some skin geometry and to make this into a rig I just need to select all this and make a subnet so now we have a cool rig and from our agent up we can just point to this cool rig and there you go we have an agent so the things that you need to do in some other systems to define your hierarchy in a certain way you don't really need to think about that in Houdini it's very forgiving so we have this agent but it's kind of like a sad agent definition so let's do something more interesting but I don't really want to create a complicated agent either so what you can use instead is side effects pre-made agent rig so I'm going to delete this guy I'm going to drop down and mock up by 3 and here is the character we can make an agent definition from and just it's an HDA and if you look in HDA you can see here are our bones and here is our geometry and you have a lot of clips embedded and uh, you can read them from the chop and uh, you have some materials and and uh, some more the main thing we care about right now is the geometry and the bones so let's go in back here and then instead of pointing to this let's point to mockup viper 3 and here we have an agent so that's pretty cool if i press w and get in wire i can see the skeleton sweet and just to prove that it's deforming if i drop down an agent edit i can if I select this tool i can just select joint here and you can see all the geometry is skinned to the skeleton all right so yeah that's a, a good start so when we have defined an agent we can cache it out with an agent definition cache and when you look in the agent definition cache you actually see the different parts that we were talking about before. The rig obviously is this. The agent layers are the instructions of what geometry that should be turned on and off. In this case, we actually just have one geometry. So if I click this allow editing of contents and go in here, you can see we have this geometry, but it's just one piece of geometry. I could have more pieces if I drop down another geometry and then do something here. and then reload this now I have two pieces of geometry then I can create a layer that can turn on and off either of these and then we have a shape library and that is all the geometry and agent definition contains so in this case it would be the sphere and the agent body and this piece of geometry is a shape and that's why it's called shape library let's remove this sphere again because it's annoying to watch and then reload it again and then we have the clips and the clips are of course the animation so all the animations for an agent definition is loaded into memory at creation and then we have this uh, extra addition that came a bit later that are transform groups so the transform groups lets you create groups for rigs you can create a group for the left arm or the upper body etc and that is used for some more advanced stuff like full body rk and partial ragdolls and etc so that yeah so that is it so now we have an agent definition so let's go to the next part here, which is to create a layer. Actually, one more thing. When we are creating the agent here, we are also creating the first clip. So just because this is a rest pose, it might look like we don't. But if we go to this mockup Piper 3 and then select something like this zombie, for example. I have this guy. Wait, let's put it to real time. We use this clip, for example, instead, and then we load that. You can see we are actually loading a clip while we are creating the agent. So a lot of times when you create an agent, you just want to create a bind pose as the first clip, and then you're going to add more clips later. But uh, yeah, let's keep this zombie walk for now.